So I want to say this. Um, <clears throat> normally, you know, when I see these articles, you know, I, you know, you read through some of them and you see stuff and some things are shocking and some things aren't shocking. But I hate to say this, but this is not really a surprise to me that this is happening. This article I come across where Atlanta Elementary School is segregated and they have segregated second graders by race. And so this is what the parents are saying. Now, I want to stop for a moment because usually I get right into these articles and I start reading it and who wrote the article and, and there's more than one issue going on here. Um, we have the virus, the mask mandates, there are pro protests going on in some school districts where parents don't want their kids to wear a mask. Then we have CRT, which is critical race theory. And that's an issue that has come up on multiple occasions. There's even been parents that have protest either for it or against it. There's, there's, there's protests about that whole concept. Then we, uh, earlier today, I saw uh, what, what I thought was really alarming. I was assuming that they were going to maybe like enhance the lessons and include indigenous people or maybe tell the story differently where it was more truthful um, or include more information. But no, it looks like they are actually, uh, there was a governor that Governor Christie in South Dakota who actually cut native studies out of the social studies lessons in that that district there. So it's it's like an erasure of history or an erasure of people, indigenous people, out of the lessons. And I feel like when issues surrounding race and culture come up, certain people feel that they would take it upon themselves rather than deal with the issue and try to resolve issues by talking it out or maybe re- uh, uh, working lessons so that you could tell things that were more truthful and were able to be uh, teaching tools uh, of academia, they'd rather erase everything. Basically, we erase parts of it, crucial parts of history, and I don't feel like that is going to solve issues. That's going to make a lot or a lot of confusion. And it's going to leave out a lot of information. It's like I remember when I was a kid growing up, the only people they had talked to us about was Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. And then as you start to get older, you know there are certain things going on that doesn't feel right. And that you know that you're being discriminated. You know that a group of people don't want you to live in a certain neighborhood or they don't want you to play on the playground with them. And so you start asking yourself these questions. Is there something missing here? There's some information, some crucial information about who I am as a person that is missing here. And so that is what you're doing. You're harming the children when you don't tell them the truth about history, when you leave out information that is crucial to them as people and as their culture and who they are. And by erasing things or not talking about it is the same thing as parents who have a hard time talking to their teenagers about sex. And that isn't an easy conversation in any sense of the word. Even adults kind of have problems dealing with those issues. But to not talk about it also opens the floor or it opens a door, in other words, I would say, for young people to go out and learn for themselves. And a lot of times they don't learn the right ways or they don't get the information from the right sources. And then that's when they're put in a lot of harm's way. And so I feel like that's what happens with all of this 
we've got a lot of things that are going on right now. A lot of people that are angry are indecisive or they're in debate over how we should teach kids what we should teach kids and in, in schools. And a lot of the ways they're approaching things are the same mistakes that have been made that has caused so much confusion. That is the why, reason why you see people doing some of the horrible things that they're doing to people that are Asian, hurting people, killing people, or uh, attacking people, hurting people that are black, or hurting people that are that are gay, are um, hurting people because they don't fit in their beliefs uh, or they don't agree with something that maybe they believe in and they feel everybody's supposed to be a carbon copy of who they are. And, and it's unrealistic because that is not the real world that we live in. Um, and unfortunately, we're seeing that in a lot of ugly ways. And so the way to fix or resolve some of these issues. You can't fix everything, but you can try to make right what has been wrong. And what people are doing is going and slipping back into a really nasty era of segregation, hatred, or erasing people's culture. And that doesn't make it right either. And so this article I came across talks about an Atlanta elementary school where the parents are not very happy about something that's been going on and they've been noticing it. So an Atlanta elementary school segregated second graders by race, parents say. And so this is by Orion Mills. And... Um, also, what I also saw alarming as a teacher in Loudoun County, she actually resigned because she didn't like CRT and she feels that it should not be implemented in schools. Yet, we have Christy, a governor, who actually caught, caught, caught a whole culture in South Dakota of indigenous history, Governor Christy, and it, it even says she speaks at a conservative political action conference, which is called the CPAC in Orlando, Florida, to teachers. So we know, I'm assuming she's Republican. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you're at the, the you know, I'm, I'm assuming that's what's going on. And it seems like it falls in line with uh, people who are supporting Trump, you know. Um, so it's just really sad because this woman was so upset about the whole idea of, of critical race theory in school, she resigned. And then she even said in her video, uh, she cried and, because she wanted the sympathy of people. And then she also said that, I believe she, she coined it, you, you feel that people like me are, are going to control this this issue here and and we're not we don't have that kind of control but yes you do when you look at Governor Christie who cut a whole history of culture out of the South Dakota school standards and then here you've got Atlanta where we see segregation going on and so I just want to make mention of that now, when I go into this article by Ryan Mills, it says the principal of Atlanta Elementary is the focus of the federal civil rights complaint after she was accused of segregating students in classes based on colors of their skin. So according to the complaint filed in late July with the U.S. Department of Education Office for Civil Rights, a Sharon Briscoe, 
the principal of Mary Lynn Elementary School in Atlanta, Georgia, only allowed the school's 13 black second grader students to be assigned to two classes, whereas the white students were allowed to be assigned to any of the school's six second grade classes. So the complaint was first reported over the weekend, okay? And the complaint was filed by Akila Posey. Now, I may not be pronouncing that name correctly, but sorry for that. But this was a mother of two students at the Mary Lynn, uh, at Mary Lynn. And so Posey operates an after school program, Mary Lynn, at Mary Lynn. And her husband is Mary Lynn's school psychologist. Okay. So in a sworn statement, Posey wrote that during the last school year, she and her husband were concerned about their daughter's placement in a particular second grade class. Because her husband is a school employee, they can request the daughter to be placed in another class. So Posey told WSB TV reporter that she let Briscoe know that she wanted her daughter placed in another classroom, in the classroom of a specific teacher who she thought would be a good fit for her child. So she said that Briscoe told her that arrangement wouldn't work. So she then said, not one of the black classes, okay? And I immediately said, what does that mean, okay? Now, did you hear that? not one of the black classes. So that was pretty specific. So Posey told WSB TV, I was confused and I asked for more clarification on that. So I was like, we have two, we have, we have those in the school. We have those in the school. And she proceeded to say, yes, I have decided that I'm going to place all the black students in two classes. So you can't be no more specific than that. So this is intentional that this is going on. So in her complaint, Posey wrote that Briscoe made the decision to segregate the black students without the knowledge of the consent of parents and unilaterally decided what was the best interest of black students. Both Posey and Briscoe are black. And so in a recorded phone call, allegedly, with the school's assistant principal, Mary Benton, about how students are assigned to classes, Benton acknowledged it was Briscoe's decision to assign Black students to only two classes. So I just wish that we had more Black kids. And then some of them are in a class because of the services that we need, that, that they need. And so Benton said on the recording, and so Posey wrote that Briscoe retaliated after she and her husband had made it clear that they had approved of the segregated classes. So Briscoe requested several times that my husband be transferred from Mary Lynn to another school, Posey wrote. So this got really nasty, it sounds like. And Briscoe unsuccessfully attempted to require my husband to move out of his office space at the school. So Briscoe also requested that Posey, her company, no longer provide after-school services to Mary Lynn, the school. So according to the complaint, another school has terminated its contract with Posey's company. And so that school's principal is a close friend of Briscoe, the complaint states. And so Atlanta Public Schools told WSB TV that its investigation into the matter has been completed and it has taken action. However, the district leaders didn't say what action they have took yet. And so Atlanta Public Schools does not condone the assigning of students to classrooms based on race that the district told the TV station in a prepared statement. So attempts by the National Review to reach Briscoe on the phone by way of email were unsuccessful. So Posey, who is being represented by an Atlanta attorney, uh, Sharice Shields wrote in her complaint that Mary Lynn's entire leadership team should be removed. 
And so the administrators there have demonstrated poor professional judgment by instituting this discriminatory practice and subsequently engaging in retaliatory acts. She wrote, such as such, they should not be trusted to make educational decisions for my child or any other children for that matter. And so that's that article. Now, that is what is going on right now, today, in some of these schools. This is happening. And so let's take a look at what's going on over here with the erasure of a whole culture of history in South Dakota. And so I was looking at that with a great alarm because I was thinking this is really getting out of control. So indigenous history culture is cut from South Dakota standards. Okay, so this is in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Teachers, educators, and other South Dakota citizens charged with crafting a new state social study standard said Tuesday, Governor Christy Noem's administration deleted many elements intended to bolster students' understanding of Native American history and the culture from their draft standards. So basically learning about the culture of the people who actually were more than likely from <laughs> originally the natives of South Dakota. And so members of the working group, as they call it, appointed by the Department of Education to review the update and the standards. They, they said that they were caught by surprise on Friday when the department released a document with significant changes. So new standards are released every seven years. And they said that the changes made to the draft they submitted in late July gave it a political edge that they had tried to avoid instead aligning with the Republican governor's rhetoric on what she calls patriotic education. So here we go with this. That came up as well. And so the working group draft re recommended including Native American culture from, now I may not be pronouncing this right, but Oseti Sakwowin stories in kindergarten to studying tribal banking systems in high school, but the department cut many of those recommendations. Okay, and so the forum news service, um, I believe, and the South Dakota's public broadcasting first reported the changes. And here we are again. Native population is not worthy of being taught. This was said by Sherry Johnson, the education director with the system Wapitan Oyete and the member of the working group. I feel it's important for all students to learn, but this is how you combat racism and you build resiliency. And so this erasure is what they think is going to combat racism when actually you're erasing a whole culture so that people can't actually know about and learn about it. And that doesn't look like that's a good solution and that's in my opinion. So she joined the group after trying unsuccessfully for years to get the state government to implement a greater emphasis on indigenous history and culture in public schools. So Johnson said that she was one of the two tribal members. So there, there are people that are trying to fight for uh, more changes for things to, to be more inclusive. However, the fight is <clears throat> long and hard and it looks like like she said she's been unsuccessful for years to get the state and government to implement a greater emphasis on indigenous history and culture in public schools so johnson said that she was one of the two tribal members on a 46 member working group but felt encouraged by the draft they submitted and so when they revised the draft it was released she watched in real time as a native American history was erased, okay? And so that is the problem. And I, that's when I saw this to be an erasure of who they are. So the Department of Education cut in half the number of references to indigenous Native Americans, tribal and Oseti Sakowin and Sioux Nation tribes located in the region. So we don't show up 
for great periods of time. So it's like we don't exist, she says. And so the Department of Education said in a statement that it relied heavily on the recommendations from the working group, but that the proposed standards put a greater emphasis on learning about experiences of Native Americans in South Dakota than the previous set of standards. So the department made certain adjustments before the release of the draft to provide greater clarity and focus on it for the educators and the public and the department said. And so the draft standards provide a balance of appropriate approach to understanding our nation's history, government, economy, geography, including opportunities to teach about experiences of all peoples. And so none of us have seen that, but, you know, somehow they are able to see and access all of this and, 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 and just push it right on through without the say-so of anybody else, which is, I feel, unfair. But Paul Herons, a retired teacher and another member of the working group, said that the changes subvert their work. So he said that they worked hard to build a conscious, or a con or not a conscious, but a consensus on the draft and try to make the standards apolitical. And so the new document takes sides, he said, and they have turned it into a political football. And so it sounds like somebody doctored up something that wasn't originally supposed to be sent out, is what it's sounding like. So while the preface submitted by the work group explained their purpose was to prepare students to be active, aware, and engage citizens of their community, state, country, and world, the Department of Education released an entirely new preface. Exactly. That's what I thought. Sounds like they took something and then they erased something else. <laughs> And they put their spin on it, which is not what originally was supposed to be sent out. So it places more emphasis on the farmers of our nation's constitution and the references Noam's effort to create a state history and civics curriculum for K through 12 students. So the revised preface states that the founders of our nation emphasize the important role of education played in equipping people for the knowledge practice of their responsibility and the respectful enjoyment of their liberties, realizing the common good and understanding of points of view and cultural beliefs are all equally protected. And so the department will hold public hearings on the proposed standards throughout the school year and the Board of Education Standards will adopt the final standards in March and the standards are widely followed by the school districts but are not mandatory. So Harris, Harris, predicted that the revisions from the Department of Education would stoke divisions at the school boards across the state as they wade through a wider political debate on how history and racism are taught. So all of a sudden, you have a political agenda, he says. And so <clears throat> that is pretty much <laughs> this article. And so I just found it really alarming. You can see the lady here at the American Conservative Union's, the CPAC. And this, I believe, was in Florida uh, where she was at this uh, CPAC. And so, early this morning, I came across this video of this woman who was crying um, at the end of her, what she had to say about, you know, not wanting CRT. A video, critical race theory, schools, teachers in Virginia, Washington examiner staff, Loudoun County, uh, teacher resigns in protest of the CRT. And so you can see the video for yourself. I'm not going to play it. I, I mean, I was looking at it and, and I was thinking to myself, wow, do you know what people are doing to school systems right now? What they're doing to, you know, some schools, they're, they're segregating kids. Do you know that's the reason why this is all coming up? So watch Loudoun County, Virginia teacher, Laura Morris, emotional resignation. And it was emotional at a Tuesday night school board meeting. So the suburban Washington, D.C. County has been at the epicenter of the fight of critical race theory and also 
The other issue that has been going on in schools is trans transgender rights. And so after previous uh, previous ruckus sessions, the board of um, on Tuesday only allowed members of the public to enter in small groups to speak publicly with no audience present. So that decision left many would-be attendees outside the, in a thunderstorm. So more as a teacher at the Luckett's Elementary School told the board that I am a Christian woman. Okay, so she's she uh, she did mention religion and she said she's a Christian woman and they said that they don't want us here. And so I found employment elsewhere. And so she resigned. But before her tearful remarks ended, her two-minute time had expired and the board cut her off, her microphone off. So the board meets again Wednesday for a final vote on the policy, which is called 8040, which would allow students to identify as the gender of their choice rather than their biological sex. So Wednesday session is the last before the school year starts on August the 26th. And so a lot of that also has to do with why some people are not in line with what has been going on because they say they want inclusiveness, but they don't want inclusiveness. And so <laughs> that is also what we're dealing with here. And, uh, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, there were some schools where they were trying to put books in the classrooms where it said two daddies, two mommies. And you'll see some of those books are on the shelf where teachers won't put them on their bookshelf. Some will and some won't. Or they'll have pictures. But it's it's the pictures is different because you know you don't have to explain it so much. As a book, there's a story in there and it has a narrative or a moral or whatever, uh, something in there and you have to explain it. And so some people are not good at that or they don't understand it, or they don't have enough education themselves on the issues. So they don't feel comfortable with what they don't feel comfortable with, or are maybe part of their religion or what they disbelieve. And they don't really want that in their environment of their, their workplace, of their classroom or whatever. And so this is another reason why. And then race issues, having to teach about CRT, some people don't want to talk about race. They don't want to talk. And then we see what Chris, Governor Christie did. We see what she did. She had everything cut out. They, they were supposed to be with a working group retooling how they were going to implement these lessons. And come to find out, she, she, she fitted, fit her narrative on what, what she felt was what do they call it? It is um, uh, they have their own rhetoric, patriotic education, and uh, I, I believe they even have there's uh, another title to it as well. And so you see her here at the CPAC meeting, and so this is really getting heated. And now, not only that is an issue. If you want to look at the virus, uh, that's an issue because the kids that are going back to school in August on the 16th here in California, in the uh, LA region, you will have to have your child tested every week if your kid is going to attend school. They will have to be tested and they will have to test negative that they are not sick with the virus teachers now they're making it mandatory that you get vaccinated if you're going to teach in these professions it's not even just the schools even places of leisure restaurants here in south la they're going to start implementing mandates where you cannot go in unless you have proof that you are covid or delta free there are going to be some mandates that are coming down the pike and they're coming soon. And when the FDA puts the gavel down and says, oh, we've approved all of the vaccines, that's when 
a lot of this is going to hit a lot of people. A lot of like the quality of life is going to change for a lot of people because these people were persistent about not getting vaccinated, not getting shots. Your life is about to change very soon when these mandates come out. Some of them have already come out with mandates already. They're in the works. And so they're in the schools. They're in the public places of business. They're going to be almost in every part of, uh, of your life somewhere where you're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to wear a mask. They're bringing that back. When they reversed it in some places, now they're bringing it back. Some parents are in an uproar at the schools saying that they have to have their kids with a mask. They're trying to get vaccines for kids that are under the age of 12 now because teachers won't even work at these schools because they're exposed to kids who probably might be infected or around people who are infected. That is a problem. And some teachers have died or they've gotten really sick. And so that is where we're at in a time like this. And so I just thought these all fall in line. It all makes a lot of sense. And here you have this person here who she's persistent about resigning because she just totally is against this uh, critical race theory when you've got schools that are bringing back segregation in 2021, erasing cultures of people who are indigenous to the, the areas where they're having school children learn. Probably some of those kids that are in that area, they're taking basically their whole culture out of the lessons of who they are or who their people were before them. This is pretty serious. And so I don't know what some people are thinking, but this is affecting everyone, everybody, in every way possible of life. And when you are affecting the kids, you are this is this is really sad right here. That it has gone to this level where you got a school that is bringing back segregation. I even heard this is not the half of it. I heard there's some schools that are trying to vote to bring back segregation. You think I'm kidding? I saw an article like that where it was in a southern state where they were voting. The parents were persistent. They were voting, wanting to bring back segregation in the schools. Parents wanting it. This is the times we're living in. So if you don't see this to be an issue, I don't know what else there is. This, not only this pandemic, but we are seeing the real reality here that racism never left. It was masked, just like we're wearing masks, we covering who we are. That's what racism, it, it was wearing a mask for a long time, and now it's uncovered, and we're seeing it in real time. That's the way I look at this. It's crazy. But it's here. It's always been here. And the, the thing about it is these are people that you thought you could trust. They're teachers. You know, they're administrators. They're in high positions like Governor Christie. You know, you're thinking, you know, these people, we can trust them. But they have their own ball game, their own football game, as they say in one of the articles, it's you playing political football. They have their own agendas, and they have the power to implement it in every way possible. And at the end of this woman's video here, when she so vehemently was against CRT, 
she basically said, oh, I would love the private schools. And that brings up another issue because private schools, they can implement things in a different fashion. And I was hearing something so alarming several weeks ago that there were some private schools that were going to do things like where they would implement basically center lessons around almost what Governor Christie was saying, but in a way that was a little bit more, it seemed like, abusive to other cultures. And I don't even want to get into that, but it was really sad. And I said, we're going back to the 60s, the 50s and the 60s. We are, we're, we're going backwards in time. Only now in this time, we got new people that are doing these things and that are pushing for this. And I saw something else where there are a group of Republicans that were actually trying to go against voters' rights. Did you not hear what I just said? Trying to get, go against, this sounds like the 50s and 60s. Here you got schools segregating kids and then you got teachers that don't want to talk about, they want to erase culture out of history in school books. Something is really, really wrong. Really, really wrong, guys. We are going backwards and fast, and it's alarming, and it's scary, and they are inflicting a lot of this stuff on the children. And the other thing is, is that even if there's topics that we don't feel comfortable about talking about, to allow your kid to know what's going on and what's out there and to explain it in a, a, a way of academia is better than hiding it and then they go out and see for themselves. I feel. But there's a way to talk to kids. There's a way to, to explain things to people. Even if you're not in total agreement with some things, but to just erase and hide and lie and segregate. This is all wrong. And I believe segregation has already been going on and it's going to happen even more. You're going to have more kids that are going to be homeschooled because of this. Because parents are looking at this. And whichever position they take, they're going to decide to homeschool their kids or hire a tutor or do something else. Because it, it's not even safe anymore to send your kids to school for various reasons, not even just the virus. You've got segregation going on. You've got taking out people's culture, lying about history. You know, and then you have all these fights, political fights with adults. And they're bringing it to the schools and they don't want to agree to disagree. And so that with all of this going on, it makes you say, that's it. I'm not sending my kid there. And this segregation thing, this sounds like a lawsuit right here in the works. Anyway, I'm going to let this video go. But this... I found all of this really, really disturbing. And then the whole thing with the mass mandate where you got the parents, they don't want that. But I will say this, that you know, I know this is not going to sound great. Some kids won't wear a mask, even if you try to keep it on them. Some don't understand. They won't wear it. And then some... Some of the masks that people have, you can't breathe through all of them. So they need to start making masks where you can breathe through it because that could be a problem. And also people get infections and other sicknesses and things from the mask. So they might have to try to tailor these masks 
so that their people can breathe through them. The other issue is that the kids are there for a long period of the day. And so is it even safe to go back in the classroom when I'm hearing some alarming stories that there's a spike in this virus, the Delta is starting to not only triple, but quadruple and whatever else. And there's more people going in the ICU in some places. The hospitals are in fear that they're not going to have enough space, that more people are getting sick. And LA County alone, it is starting to spread the virus again. And what I'm hearing is a lot of the unvaccinated are in the hospitals. There's a lot of people that are getting sick all over again. It's like the start of March of 2020 all over again. Is it even safe? I feel like you didn't really see that many kids sick when schools were, were kind of closed. But now that they're going to push kids back in there again with all this going on, is it even safe? And I mean that in a lot of ways. Is it even safe? What about the teachers? Are there, with all of this confusion, all this fighting, is it even safe to have your kids in an environment where these things are going on? And you thought school shootings were bad. I mean, you got that. And now you got these issues. I mean, to be a parent, and going through this and having to send your kid to school with all this going on, your kid, you don't even know if your kid is in a classroom only because of their race. I mean, these are really alarming situations here. I don't know if people even saw this.